Welcome back. Now, the Borono state government has begun the resettlement of IDPs in various camps in the state capital of Maiduguri. The federal government had last week inaugurated a committee to take charge of the resettlement of the IDPs as well as the reintegration of uh, repentant insurgents. But of course, there have been concerns over the safety of the displaced persons who have been resettled. The governor has, however, allayed those fears, saying certain conditions must be met before resettlement can happen. Here's what the governor said. The requirement for resettlement are as follows. Location, security clearance by military commandant. First of all, we do use to receive clearance by military. We provide housing, either transition shelters, permanent or rented homes. Health facility appropriate for the population. Safe drinking, school, police station or police force, market place, traditional rural resource center, civil defense officers, establishment of civil authorities, police officers, teachers, health care providers, nurses, midwives, community centers, solar electricity, places of worship, free access and movement, market relevant skills and livelihood plan for youth and women in particular. All these are conditions for return. We are very mind and we are not mindful. So all these are factors that were considered before returning back fearful. Now, let's discuss this further. Now being joined on the program by Salauddin Hashim, who is a security expert. He joins us via Zoom from Kaduna. Uh, Mr. Hashim, thank you very much for joining us on the program. You had the governor given the conditions that must be met before resettlement happens. So it's not as if uh, these IDPs have just been removed from the camps and taken back to uh, the, their, their communities now, but that certain conditions must be met. But of course... Some people have expressed uh, concerns, I mean concerns especially about uh, security. Even some of uh, the IDPs themselves actually raised those concerns, but then they made it very clear that they actually want to go back. What's your take on this? I think those conditions are not sufficient, if you ask me. <clears throat> yes, I have very great respect for uh, Zulu and, of course, his uh, giant stride in trying to uh, contribute efficiently uh, to improve the lives of uh, internally displaced persons. Uh, but if you do a retrospect and you take uh, into account communities uh, that still pay levy uh, up until now uh, to bandits uh, in different territories, and if you recall that even in the Northeast, uh, there are still a number of communities uh, that are still within the control uh, of ISWAP. Uh, so I think if the governor is talking about uh, uh, those soft approach as uh, a condition for return, I, I think it is just a, a, a little bit below expectation. Uh, because if you put all of these things together, mm. uh, there are still not sufficient reasons uh, to expose uh, vulnerable citizens to harm. Uh, what are the adequate protection framework? It is not about provisions of health, schools, access to primary health care centers. But, but he did talk about military clearance as well, that, of course, the military would have to give the clearance before it happens. So, if, for instance, if people are to be relocated to any particular community, the military has to give that clearance before it happens, to, to give the clearance that that area is safe and has been rid of insurgents before it happens. Then what is the response rate in the event of an attack. attack. That is one thing we also need to take into account. I mean, we saw uh, a number of uh, farmers that were uh, massacred, about 40 of them. Mm. Uh, and of course, the uh, excuse that was given at that time also uh, was that uh, they didn't uh, come uh, to take clearance. So I, I think uh, one of the situations that I, I find around this is the fact that uh, there is still a number of uh, uh, absence of clarity uh, in terms of what the state itself, uh, and I mean state, I mean the, the government as a whole uh, at all level intends to really achieve uh, because you cannot uh, be attempting to resettle uh, when you also know uh, that uh, there are also uh, pockets of threats uh, that might be coming in uh, in different uh, uh, angles. And of course, the fact that there are also recent reports uh, that these guys are also regrouping and most of the sleeper cells are also activated. So if you are now using 
all of these clearance are not even the military itself if the military itself has adequate intelligence and most of their formations will not also be attacked so how much more are you then exposing i mean we saw what happened in bill but, uh, but, but what what uh, then will be the alternative because you can't continue to keep this uh, uh, people in these uh, uh, camps uh, conditions in the camps are horrible we've, we've heard of stories and we, we've actually seen some where conditions in the camps are very horrible the people themselves are tired uh, they, they can hardly feed and, uh, you know, resources doesn't come anymore. And be, before, of course, they used to get help from uh, civil society organizations and, and aid agencies. But uh, uh, in recent times, it's, it's been horrible. And you just can't continue to keep these people. Some of them have been in those camps I for agree. five, six years. And they're I, just I agree, eager I to return. Completely. I, 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 shared, I share that sentiment also. Uh, and of course, one thing that I also feel uh, is that, uh, yes, the issue of resettlement uh, should also be holistic. People who have stayed in, that, uh, in those camps for too long, and of course, they have overstretched resources. Of course, if you disaggregate the accountability around some of those resources, oh, I mean, it is just a conversation uh, for another day, mm, uh, mm. because even the camps have become a complete tale of woes that you hear on a regular basis, mm. where sex for food has become a regular uh, campaign and issues where people are now have, that have to uh, incentivize uh, those who manage the camps uh, before you can actually get uh, food in return. So, mm. I mean, I don't want to get into all of that. I believe we can have that uh, conversation dealt with some other day. But of course, yes, it is important to do a DDR. Okay, to resettle, to, uh, to uh, demobilize, it is not holistic. You cannot resettle when you have not demobilized and disarmament has not completely taken place. There are still people wielding arms. There are still people that are going to consistently attack those communities. Mm. Even if the military says that these places are safe and who holds them to account mm. in the event that there is any form of a compromise in the kinds of resettlement programming they are doing. So you don't take an aspect of resettlement and isolate it from the entire value chain chain of the DDR process. You must demobilize, you must do a disarmament before you resettle. How much more just uh, taking a minute component of the entire program chain and then you are implementing without necessarily uh, fulfilling the entire uh, scope? I agree that there is already situations within the camps, but the life of one citizen is worth much more and before we expose that life to vulnerable harm it is important that we do adequate and due diligence around it we cannot con we cannot continue to have a an endless uh, counter insurgency strategy mm -hmm. without necessarily putting framework for resettlement but to be very honest if you are taking an isolating resettlement out of the entire value chain then i think there is a lot that still needs to be dealt with the military still needs to clarify in terms of how well they have been able to do a lot of human intelligence gathering hmm. if these guys get back one of the issues that will help is to use them as a very vegetable tool for human intelligence and to help them in prosecuting the warfare. But are they also not going to be abused from both sides of Sorry. the coin? Would also the state that is expected to be the guardian also not pose itself as a threat to these guys when they resettle? There are stories of uh, state agents who also rape resettlement uh, communities and also extort and all of that. What exactly are the framework within the accountability state, whether as it right. put borders to life, whether as it pertains to uh, the processes and procedures uh, of people's securing livelihood? I think it should be holistic and it should be robust. We must not isolate it uh, just to resettlement. Salaudi and Hashim now. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. And thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks a lot. All right, that's how much we can take on the program this week. We thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.